Hello and welcome back to the Front 3 show with the Sports Babble on a different night this week or on Wednesday night because uh, we have other arrangements tomorrow and we can't make it tomorrow so for one week only we're going live um, on a Wednesday night here on Facebook. Uh, the show's going to be a little bit different from now on, we're going to shorten it down a little bit, it's only going to be about half an hour so long and we only have a couple of topics that we're going to try and rattle through and then answer some of your questions. As you've seen on our post what our topics are, but we'll get off with, um, we'll go with the first one, because it's been a bit of a mad week, as always, in the Premier League. Um, and Chelsea were playing on Monday night, and they were beat 4-1. And Antonio Conte hasn't had a great, sort of, 2018, so, Jake, to sort of have a look at it, um, Antonio Conte, do you think he can turn around this 2018 that miserable start he's on, or do you think his time's running out? Look, that's not a, a question that Antonio Conte has been berated by the media recently. They've been asking him, you know, is his future at Chelsea? Well, that largely depends on the players. You know, are the players going to listen to Conte's, um, I suppose, tactics? And are they going to apply those on the pitch? Because that will determine how successful the rest of 2018 is for Antonio Conte and whether or not he keeps his job in the summer or whether or not he wants to stay. You know... We've looked, I've looked at a number of different takes in terms of the Chelsea performances this season. The title winners last season, they were getting beat at half-time at the Emirates 3-0 last year and um, they turned to a back five and that changed their season. Now, some people will say they're not winning enough tackles in the middle. Well, based on the number of tackles they made last year, which... Um, and based on the fact there were 26 games into this season, they should have made 447 tackles and they've made 446. So in terms of tackles, in terms of the competitiveness in midfield, there is no difference between last year's team and this year's team. The real difference between the two seasons is goals. And they're 12 goals short of where they should be this season, um, which can be put down to a number of things. Firstly, cost isn't there. You know, He scored 20 goals last season. So far, the replacement Morata has only scored 10. Hazard last year got 16, so far he's only scored 9, and Pedro, 9 goals last season, 4 this season. They should have, at this stage of the season, about um, 169 shots, and they only have 155. Now I know those numbers might mean very little to those people who are watching this evening, but what I'm trying to say is that at the top end of the pitch, Chelsea are shot shy, and they're looking weak. So... Before I have my say, I'm sure you'll have something to say about it. I know you said something before. Would you agree or disagree then with the, the seem to be the pressure that Conte is? I know Chelsea have released a statement saying they're going to back him, but the, the pressure in the media and fans and social media that Conte is in big trouble here and, and you'll not see the season out. Would you agree or disagree with that statement? Well, the last two managers have lost their jobs after defeats to West Brom. Uh, Chelsea play West Brom next Monday night. So it's, a, it's an interesting coincidence that this comes together. But look... Conte is a top manager. Yeah. It is not for anyone in the media to doubt that. Wherever he goes, if he leaves Chelsea, he will be successful. It's up to the players at Chelsea to listen. I wouldn't agree. Um, with, well, not with you, gentlemen. You, I wouldn't agree with the whole statement and the media thing around Conte that he should be losing his job or people should be getting... The media creates a well, lot of it. Like. They do 110 percent And I'm also on social media talk about it a lot. And Obviously, he's going to be under pressure. They all managers in the Premier League will be under pressure because they're but in the Premier League. And the top six again. And the top four again. And when you're reigning champions again, there's going to be more pressure. Exactly. I think I would like to see a different side of Chelsea and I would like to see them... Maybe try and sort this out, even if they finish this season outside the top four, which would be um, awful for them. Like, but give Conte, if, if he wants to definitely be there, give him another go at it next year. Back him a little bit more and see what goes. Because I think Antonio Conte is an absolute superb manager. He showed that last year. Like you highlighted there, Jake, when they had their blip um, and they were at, at Arsenal or whatever, and then he changed it to a five at the back. His adaptability was, yeah. was made very good. He showed, like, us. and he's in the back, he's in another deep corner. He's, he's not at the top four yet. He's still only, was it five or six points behind Manchester United in the second? He can still catch them. You never know when they play them soon. Still playing in, yeah. In February. So, no, I think it's wrong, as usual, that there's so much pressure on a manager. He won the Premier League on his first goal asking last year. And it was, you know, that change that Chelsea made was down to him. You know, And it was a small squad compared to, like, the likes of Man City had. Even, I think, Liverpool had a bigger squad last year. And sometimes, you know, it can be the players, maybe people saying, I'm not talking about Chelsea, but in general... 
players aren't playing for the manager and then all of a sudden there's a new manager and there's an uptake and you see that happen a lot but when it's the same squad of players there's not a new transfer window there's not a new manager comes in Conte makes that change himself and the players click like that that is down to the manager and I think Chelsea would be stupid to let him go stupid to let him go before the end of the season but you have to remember that Chelsea's back five was became the paradigm the model for the other teams other teams changed when they saw how successful it was for Chelsea they began to change how they set their teams up mm. Conte came in and he changed English football in a very short space of time um, that cannot be underestimated no 110% there's been rumours, uh, just get your quick opinion on it as a Chelsea fan, that, and Jason Dully had highlighted it in one of our earlier posts um, earlier, thanks Jason as always for commenting, um, that Chelsea might be lining other managers up, there was Sarri, for, is it Mauricio Sarri from Napoli, mm -hmm. Luis Enrique, if they were to get rid of Antonio Conte, because I mean this has happened before Chelsea, like it, um, would one of them be of interest to you, or would you... Or would it be Carlo Ancelotti brought back in? It would be Carlo Ancelotti, if you, it would be, if I'm honest. Um, Love Carlo Ancelotti, I've talked about it on the show before. Um, he knows the club, um, you know, he's won things. Um, he was the first Chelsea manager to win the League and Cup double. Um, the players loved him. I've talked before about the big players at the club yeah. loving him. Um, Frank Lampard, John Terry, you know, the only one they love more is Mourinho because of the success associated with it. Um, you know, those other two that you mentioned, there are obviously very good managers, very successful managers, and there's a reason why Chelsea's been linked with them. Um, my fear would be just that it's changed again, and there's no stability there in terms of players. There's, th you're probably not going to get um, stability with managers after Wenger goes from Arsenal. Like you know, you're not going to get it again. Probably in the Premier League that for not for that long, long, no, no. You know, I, I was reading something today that, you know, a, a long period for a manager in the Premier League is just three years or more now, which it probably is, you know, when you think about all the managers in the top six, how many of them have been there for longer than three years. Um, but Ancelotti would, would be my choice. But my first preference would be Conte to stay and, you know, some sort of resolution to happen. It's, it seems like it's very unlikely to happen um, because I think it, ha it didn't happen in January in the transfer window. It, ha it didn't happen last summer which we think was the big thing after he came in as you said Jack in his first season in the Premier League and he won the Premier League in his first season and the, the board didn't give him back and I think he sort of thought what do I have to do here then you know is this the way things run at this club he maybe you know, he started talking this season about you know you know this club you know what happens at this club you know what's happened to managers in the past at this club he's, as if he's coming to realise that I'm not different to anyone who's here before Um. If, what it, it appears to me that they brought Conte and they promised him you deliver, we'll back you, etc, etc. And they've decided during his stint that actually, um, no, we're not going to invest in big names. We're going to try and bring younger players through and you're going to be the man to oversee that. And it just doesn't seem to me that Conte is happy with that role in the Chelsea system. And for that reason, there is possibility that this will be his last season. If he makes it, if he makes it, that's 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 it. It I suppose shows the the power of the media, you know. Yeah. But and for Chelsea fans who absolutely adore him, mm. would that be right? To, that'd be fair to say, you know, a big loss and a big loss of, of a character from the rest of the league. So well. just to wrap this little topic up, do we individually or as a three, do we think Conte can turn us around at Chelsea? I'm going with my heart, but I think yes, like okay, you know. Barcelona is a big task in the Champions League, yes, but you know, a top four and you know, a good semi final final, maybe even a win in the FA Cup, you know, maybe maybe gets us there. What do you think? Yeah, Brendan's speaking with his heart here. I'm gonna go with the head. The rationality tells me that this has happened before at Chelsea, only two seasons ago. It cost Mourinho his job, who, as Chelsea said, holds such a, a close, I suppose, bond to Chelsea fans and play former players. I don't think Conte is going to find a way out of this. He's not going to have the time to do so. So I would say his days, his weeks or months are numbered at Chelsea Football Club. Um, and my comment is, I, I think he can turn it around, but I'm worried that he won't be given the time. But I think he can turn it around, just whether Chelsea give him the time or not. No one's anything. questioned the credentials of the no, manager. It's the time. Yeah. And that's why I'm going against the thought that he will 
Turn it around. <laughs> our, uh, our second topic tonight that we're going to look at, it, it's sort of been discussed, certainly after his performance on um, Sunday, when, he, when I thought that he'd scored the winning goal for Liverpool, that um, maybe Liverpool are looking more like a one-man team. Would you agree or disagree with this comment that Liverpool with Mo Salah are a one-man team at the minute? Which one he wants to go first? Then you go first. Sh- short answer is no. Like you know, that's that's a very sort of off the cuff phrase to use. I think. Um, yes, he's you know he's been their standout player of the season so far. But every team has a standout player. Do you know what I mean? Kevin yep. De Bruyne. You know, you see pull him out of the city team. You say, is the, you know, is he the one man at City? And um, what it all click without him? Um, you know, you don't know really because he he's been a, he's been steady throughout throughout the season. Um, <clears throat> I do think they've been relying on him more in recent weeks. Um, would it be fair to say that? Um, Certainly relied on him on Sunday. Yeah, I think um, Mane has maybe gone off the boil a wee bit since Coutinho left, and, and I know he had the injury um, in around that, that period. Um, but I think Firmino's had a fantastic season as well. Mm-hmm. Um, the struggles with Liverpool are, are at the back, you know. That's no secret, really. Um, but yes, you know, pressure is probably going in on Salah a bit too early because it's f- first season for Liverpool, and, and he has shone, and now people maybe expect him to to shine every week. He he still, you know, misses some amount of chances. <laughs> yeah. You know, we were talking about this earlier on uh, that he is the according to the Premier League, he is the player who's missed the second most big big chances. First, Mike's in the medical to be on. Mm. There's 14, <laughs> I think, 14 big chances. What they class as big chances. He'll be on 35 goals already with 12 games <laughs> to play a massive, massive. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That could have been the difference in some of the draws. <laughs> but, you know, he has been fantastic. He, he's yeah. actually he scored 20 goals for Liverpool, um, something that Eden Hazard hasn't done for Chelsea since he's been at the club, mm-hmm. which is a pretty pretty good stat. Um, it shows how, you know, how much Hazard is lorded at Chelsea and in the wider circles, you know, Jed looking at him, etc. Um, it just shows you how good he has been, and that's why the discussion around him is that you know he's, he's a one man band. But what do you I, think? I, I don't. I think that's well, good two responses to that question. It's certainly not Virgil <laughs> Van Dijk who has, I suppose, had a nightmare start to his Liverpool career. So he's certainly not going to be the man that Liverpool can rely on. And secondly, Mo Salah is the big player that other teams fear in the Liverpool team. He alone has got 36% of the team's goals in the Premier League. Together with Firmino, who Brendan mentioned, they've got 55% of the goals in the Premier League. Now, that is massive because goals win games. And we've seen how the impact of fewer goals this season has impacted Chelsea. You know, has, has I suppose, threatened um, their belonging to the, to the top four. So, Salah. Excellent player, misses too many chances, and the fear that I have is will this Liverpool defence be strong enough to ensure that what Salah does, like he did on Sunday, will be protected and will be regarded as moments that win football matches. Yeah, um, <clears throat> that's an- another bit of the stinger from Spurs coming back into it and equalising was the fact that Mo Salah's goal is not a winning goal now, do you know, it's sort of yes. forgotten about it, you know what I mean? And, it's uh, almost like that is a, sorry, <coughs> uh, just when it's in my head, like a, a microcosm of what has happened in Liverpool season so far, mm-hmm. you know, within that two or three minute period, Salah goes in and wins the game practically, and then, you, you know, you can argue the penalty, yes, he's offside, whatever, but your defence lets you down, and is that uh, uh, what's happening in Liverpool season on a wider picture? Mm-hmm. You know, Salah's, you're banging in the goods up front, and, you know, at the back, it's not balancing out. Right? It uh, it nearly killed me that game, if I'm honest. Um, it uh, yeah, it just it was absolutely daft. It was how you can't. And we didn't we're really going to talk about this much. So I'll sort of talk a little tiny about it. How you cannot see a game out for ninety seconds when you're a Premier League outfit should re it hasn't been talked about enough as a Liverpool fan. It's been more. Now you know how much I love Jurgen Klopp. <clears throat> I adore the man, I think he's the best manager, him and Rafa Mita has been the best manager in my lifetime at Liverpool by miles, And but <clears throat> how they cannot see that game out, that's really, really amateurish. 
Yeah, like, but it's must be frustrating. Though. It is. It's, yes. it's, it's, and you were saying, Virgil Van Dyke. I think Van Dyke actually, up until that point, had a really solid game. High Kane got a penalty. That's right. But then, as Jimmy Carragher says, yeah, I don't agree with about ninety percent of the time. Clear your lines, like yeah. head the ball away. I would expect um, a wee one to do that. You know, just go up and clear the ball. Head, the, get the get, clear the lines. Doesn't do anything. Doesn't react. And then, I know. People always come back to the same point that Klopp has not sorted out the <coughs> offensive problems in the Liverpool team. But Jurgen Klopp cannot legislate for the amount of individual errors that take place. Virgil van Dijk kicked the back of Lamella's leg. He did make the most of it, but there was definitive contact and therefore he got the penalty and therefore Liverpool lost two points. Now, how can Klopp, standing on the sideline, Thinking 75 million has been spent on this player to make the big decisions and to make them correctly at the big moments in matches. And he's done this. You know, as a manager, he is 100 times messages more frustrated than you are. Oh, and, and, and judging by his face at yeah. that full time, I would have thought so. But is, it a, is it a mentality, I know what you're saying, that they're is it a mentality goals. that that club has you know, set in that we win the ball, have the pitch quickly... And if not, then yeah, you take yeah, your see, chances. See, the thing but... is, um, <clears throat> Liverpool obviously, because they, they seem to get caught in games, or like the Sevilla game, or like Spurs, and they don't win the game in the end, a lot of it is made up of, uh, okay, Liverpool defended badly, but we, we, just, we just seem, we do defend really reasonably good enough to a point, we mm. don't concede that many chances. What happens is, we just give away clinical chances. Mm. Or clinic, you know, clinical moments in the game. Give those chances. Yeah, it's just, it's like, Clinical mistakes to ourselves. Apart from that, if Virgil Van Dijk had headed that ball away, you'd have been, we'd have been saying, that would have won a really good game by Van Dijk, because Harry Kane did nothing. That's right. Apart from um, winning a penalty, and then he obviously scored an equaliser, and he had a penalty save, but he did nothing the whole game. That's Harry Kane. And that was Virgil Van Dijk. Lovren was, was solid enough, apart from falling over, but he was solid enough the rest of the game beside him. Everything looked okay. My issue with that, and I will get around to finishing off my salad point, and with Liverpool and Klopp was, on Sunday... He made the wrong tactical changes. Yes, that's a big point. He went actually. to five at the back. See, as soon as you go to five at the back and then four and then one, I was sitting with Patrick Renshaw watching the game. We, us watching the game as Liverpool fans, instantly thought in our heads, right, that's it, we're, we're either going to concede here or we're not going to win this game. That's it, done. The wrong attitude to send out. But I've overspoken on or over talking that comment. Mohamed Salah, do I think we're coming to one man team? No, because of you, you are down there for me, no. And I think Mane will get his form, it'll come. But I do think that, certainly in the big games, we are maybe just a tiny bit over-relying on him. And yes, big players win big games, but like on, on <clears throat> Sunday, there was nothing going attacking on each other. If you're a Liverpool fan out there and you do believe that he is, um, I suppose, the only player in your team, the only player that makes big difference uh, in the big games, then of course let us know. But more than that, why not have a two-man team why not go and see does Salah have a six foot five cousin who maybe plays in the lower leagues of Egyptian football Pleasure bring him in bring him <laughs> in someone who can defend you know for a long <clears throat> time you know Van Dijk's great he can he can uh, find a pass he's elegant on the ball but you know at the top club I want a defender who can just defend that just loves the art of defending, and that we've lost that. We've lost it. But, conclusion? <laughs> I don't think Liverpool are a one man team under Mohamed Salah. I think they were on Sunday, but I don't think genuinely that they are. I think that's a bit, a wee bit harsh. I know that's me being a Liverpool fan, but that's my opinion. What do you, you don't think they are? No, I don't think they are. No. Do you think they are? Um, probably the most hated uh, comment that we're going to get into tonight, and I know Mark Bailey's just talked about it there on our Ethan. Thank you for your comment, Mark, and hello to everyone else that's watching. Um, Pochettino, Mauricio Pochettino was talking in an interview, I think it was either Monday or it might have been on Sunday night, and he was talking about the diving, because obviously Deli Ali dove, he rightly got yellow carded for it, that's fair enough. Um, was Pochettino right when he talked about diving? Uh, do we focus on it too much, and is it is it a, a part of our game where we use it to trick our opponent that shouldn't be as talked about or picked upon? Rightly punished, he did say, and before you start, he did say they should all be punished, 100%, but he, he basically wouldn't want to take him out of the game. What do you think of him? Um, well, I think I, I disagree with him, but I I don't think, you know, it's ever going to go out of the game, because I don't think 
people talking about you should you know if you if you die three times in a season you should get a six month ban and all this sort of crack like uh, that's never gonna happen like you know it's like handball it or something it's equivalent to that I think um but like I don't think he should be encouraging it the way he is I I can understand what he's saying look he's pointed out something very obvious you know. Every single player, well, they were playing 50 years ago in England or they're playing today, they share the same human nature. And that human nature tells us that we want to gain an advantage over our opponent, whatever the cost might be. So, are, is it going to continue? Yes. Diving will continue. Is it right? No. Just because it's going to happen doesn't mean that it's right. And then there's, you know, players still dive even though they are fouled. You know, you can be, you can be fouled and not go down, and you can be fouled, go down, and dive. Mm -hmm. You can go, you can obviously be fouled and go down and not dive. The Harry so Kane how, on for the penalty that he won, and the Delafeo. Delafeo won, yeah. Harry Kane, Delafeo, they they dive to win the penalty and get contact. Do you know what I mean? Like, if that had been 10 15 yards away, I and came that's what I understand from Pochettino's comments. Yeah. Because so many times I've seen Arsenal players stay on their feet. Good, honest player. Great honesty. <laughs> but winning, nothing. You know, staying on their feet when there's a clear foul occurred. If that player had gone to ground, a penalty would have been awarded. They wouldn't have received the yellow for simulation because it wasn't a dive. It was contact and they would have got the penalty. But they stay on their feet. And that's where, that's where I can understand Pochettino's comments, but ultimately, tricking the opponent, similar to tactics, I'm not going to equate what Conte did at halftime at the Emirates last season to some skullduggery <laughs> in the penalty area. <laughs> and that's what Deli Ali engaged in on Sunday, and he has engaged in before. It's not good enough. No, I, I think, think Deli Ali certainly seems to have an issue. He maybe needs to practice his diving and get better at it because he does get called out a lot on it. Um, do I think Pochettino was right? I kind of do think he was right. I know the word trick sort of doesn't sit well with both of you were talking about it beforehand. Yes, and you know, English is not his first language, so maybe, you know... No, I think he, I think he, he knew what he was saying. Do you think so? Yeah, I think if, had Pochettino was a clever man, I think he knew find out what he was saying. A lot of the media attention was on Dele Alli afterwards for his dive and getting the yellow card on it. And he was, part of it was him sticking up for Dele Alli, definitely. But he was also talking about like he's come from Argentina where, like he said it on an interview where the referee would have almost applauded them for tricking him and diving and it would have been even practising training diving to win penalties. I remember when I was younger and we would have played down in the tech, we used to put, like mess about and we would try and dive against someone for playing uh, like uh, live or something, you know, in front of the goals. Mm. And as a goalkeeper you try and throw yourselves down when a penalty or something you're playing amongst mates. We were always at it, like a messing about. I, I do agree with Pochettino. I think... Diving, look, it's a, it's a part of the game, it's the skullduggery bit of the game, but it also, like, it gives us something to talk about. It's not nice what happens your, against your team, but it also adds more to the drama, and football is all about the drama. That's, that's all. But I think there's enough drama without it. I think, you know, it's, I'm trying to, it's hard to find a, a comparison with another sport. It, it's like hitting the ball twice in tennis or something, you know, maybe someone doesn't catch it, maybe someone catches it at the odd time, but it's, it's not how you're supposed to play the game. It's technically cheating. You, you know, if a an umpire or a linesman sees it, hundred percent of the time, you're not going to win the point, or you're not going to win the free kick in this mm -hmm. case. So, why is it okay to do it sometimes if it's not seen? You know, uh, I don't get that. Like. No, look, it's like going to the West End to watch a great play like Les Miserable and finding out when you get there that there's going to be a less than satisfactory actor taking one of the key roles. That's how I would see diving, you know, a player who's not good enough to do it the true and proper way, trying to gain an advantage. <laughs> how do you follow that up? I think there... that's because it was a top player. He <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is. There a wee bit of a sting in there because of a certain Arsenal fan on our show here tonight. But no, um, as I said, I, I, I sort of agree with Pochettino about the diving. I know you don't. That's fair enough. And and obviously you don't. But, but like, it is. A, it's a complicated issue. It's not black or white. Like. No. But we talk. We, there's definitely been more times in football where a handball has caused more chaos than a dive. Can you think of like a dive? We were trying to think of it earlier. We were talking about Arsenal players. Can you think of a dive that has like completely changed the? Sh Look, Maradona's handball 
just nearly wrecked football. Terry and then Henry. Thierry Henry's handball, yeah. I nearly wrecked Liverpool. This, do you know, can you think of a day where this has caused... It hasn't been, and Potts saying it's such a minimal thing, and we dramatise it so much, that maybe he just has a point. Like, it's... You dive, you, if you dive, and you're caught... I think it happens more often than a delivered handball. Look, can you remember a few years ago when the, the mainstay commentators of the key football show that would be on of a Saturday night would lambast players from overseas who would dive. Mm. Bringing that nastiness, that vileness into our game. It used to be seen as a foreign exactly. thing, didn't it? Like... And now when Deli Ali does it, <laughs> applaud him and quote his manager when he justifies it. It's not right. That's fair enough. I, I, I said maybe I'm not wrong. Yeah. But it's the not... other thing that, to, to add to that point is, is the Gary Lineker one on, on Twitter when um, it could be because he's former Spurs as well, but when Pedro dived, um, he used an expletive on Twitter, mm -hmm. and on that Dali Ali one the other day, he just he was commenting on the game, and then he just didn't say anything about the Dali Ali one. Is it because he's English? Is it because he's former Spurs? Do you know what I mean? You can't have double standards exactly, when it comes to who he's doing it. And I think that that thing about it, it's a foreign thing is absolutely nonsense. Yeah. Like, no way. Like I said, nonsense. about five minutes ago, Harry Kane, seen Carries coming out. And he dove, now Karius came across with his hand, but Harry Kane dove, left his legs trailing, rightly won a penalty because then there was contact, and that gives a foul. And he won it, Deli Ali dove, there was not a contact at all, and he gets yellow carded. But I think there is, there were still, both players were still diving. Like Deli Fay, like, on Monday night, John he Harris dove, as John Tiger said. Um, Ian McConnell said it was very deep there, Jake. And Kurt, Kurt Hall, you know, Kurt Hall came out after the game, and it's rare that a goalkeeper is, is the one who comes out. Um, you know, for the interview after the game, and I think he wanted to come out because when he was making that point about Delafeu, he, you know, he was saying it very passionately that um, Delafeu left his leg in, he dived, Courtois pulled himself down to the ground, he made himself small, as he said, um, but Delafeu engineered the con the contact himself. Do you know what I mean? But he still did dive. There still was contact, so. You know, that's very hard for a referee. Yeah, that's, that's the other point. That it's very hard to recognise. Yeah, but I suppose the thing about and it there... And with VAR, do you, are you going to recognise it even though it's in slow the motion? Thing, the thing about there, there, the, there are these loopholes in the system. But what I would always say is that when the keeper comes out, gung-ho. He, 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 he leaves himself wide open. Yes, that's it. 100%. You know, there's a difference between that. I don't care what people say if they still use the word dive or any other synonym for it. There's a difference between that and what Dele Alley did. Okay. Deli Ali was waiting on the contact, it didn't come, and he had already decided to go down. That is cheating. The Delafeu, Harry Kane were not cheating. It's a very, very fine line though. It is. I, I, think, it's, I, think, it's, I think it's the same, but I, I, I have no issue with it. I honestly don't have... Diving um, and handball, it's, it's, a, it's just part of football and what happens, and we get to talk about it, we get to rant about it, read about it, whatever. Do you think Osar died for Chelsea? Or for Arsenal? The whole game, he spent the whole game in his back. <laughs> I got in there before you did. Um, uh, contact again. Yeah. Contact again. Went down very easily under the contact. At the time you were in. Really? But the referee has no option. Yeah. I give it. He was correct. So, just to sort of wrap up, we've a couple more minutes to go because we didn't start bang on time tonight. Um, we've done a couple of things this week. Brenton last night on his new weekly slot announced his team of the week. Uh, Jason uh, Dudley asked us earlier if we agree with it and that's on our Facebook page and on our Twitter and it's up on our website so go and check it out. I thought it was very good Brenton. Well Thank done. you. Um, we both agree. agree? We, we agree with the yes. selections. Yeah, we did, didn't we? He stole some off me. He, 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 uh, I talked about uh, Vertonghen and the next thing he found Vertonghen. Vertonghen was class. He was on Vertonghen. was class. Look, the only thing that I would disagree with was the, <laughs> the reference to Carius as a potential. Now Carius had a decent game you know, he saved a penalty that which kicked straight at him, uh, and various other things that you're expecting to do. You know, when a keeper goes from letting in shots at his near post to then making the odd save, we can get carried away. You know, there was no justification for including or mentioning him. I don't think Brendan. If you if you really watch the game, he, he made a couple of key key saves. And I I one look at Son in the second half. Would yeah. Be it. Um, <clears throat> and you know, I, I thought in general he seemed more. Composed. Robust. Yeah. Both of those things. Mm. I, thought um, was, I, think, I don't want to touch with no changes. I think this is a little turning point for Carius. 
Like he was very solid. He was, he was unlucky with that punch and nobody thought about the punch. Yeah. See the penalty save. I'm glad you brought yes. this up. Um, a keeper can't stand a chance in a penalty. A keeper dives the wrong way. He's a tube. Dives the right way, gets a hand on it. He's not strong enough. Stays down the middle, which is a brave decision to make. If he stands still and Harry Kane puts it on the top corner, it was that many did this before. Stood still and was like, "What are you doing, even in this?" No, Harry okay. stood still and it took a big gamble and he saved it. I agree, actually, with that point. I, I think he studied Kane, and in the big games, I think he said that's where Kane went with penalties. And Kane just had hard down the middle and. Curious, just thought I'll, I'll take the chance and I'll stay here. And, and fair you know, play to him, and I, do I, credit, I credit that then, yes. Um, but just quickly, um, we'll talk about what's coming up later on this week, and definitely go and check out Brenton's uh, team of the week. There's more coming from Jake as well. Um, lads from John Taggart, quickly, Zaha injured for a month apparently. Still think Paz could stay up. This could be huge. I actually completely missed that news. Yeah. But, um, just been watching too much basketball and football and whatever and trying to buy a house. So I didn't know about that, John. Um, I feel like I should say commiserations to you here because... I know, that that is... I wa- he was, I'm sorry. He was playing on the weekend, though, um, against Newcastle. Newcastle on Sunday? And uh, he was doing his usual... Like, uh, every time he faces a defender up, you can feel the, peer, the fear here, <laughs> the fear coming out of the TV. Can't and that's, that's the main worry here for, for any... Um, for any Palace fan who was at the game, who appreciates what Saha offers and the fear that he strikes into the defenders, other teams would just be, they'll look at Ben Tech and they'll say, oh, you know, he's missed the most clear-cut chances in the league. And we know this, how to deal with them. This season. We know how to deal with them. Saha is that different, different intricate, wriggler. Yeah. You know, as I'd like to refer to him as Salaz as well. He's a major loss. Can they stay up? Well, they've lost a lot of big players through injury, you know, thinking of Scott Dan, etc., Mahamadou Sako, um, yes. I think they'll yes. just stay up. I think they'll just stay up. It's going to be very, very the, They'll tight. be down there, I think, like, but... It, it all depends on how long he's out as well, like, yeah. but you saw the impact he had, you know, when he came, mm-hmm. came back from injury last time. Like. John, John was actually at the games, sorry, and he said uh, he was injured at the start and he played on. Well, I seen him towards the end when he was still on and he was skinning people, so... Fair play to him, but he might have done himself a bit yeah. more damage. Eamon as well was talking there about another use for video referee. I think he's referring to back where we're talking about Diving. diving stuff. I, I don't, as I mentioned there briefly, I don't think that's coming. I don't want another use for video referee because we'll never get to watch again game football. It's constantly being used. Maybe for the likes of the Dali Alley one, which is clear cut anyway. But you know the likes of that Delafeu one, the likes of the Harry the Kane one. They're not going to look at that again and say... Oh, he was diving, or he's, he's manufactured the contact. Well, they could because if if the if the goalkeeper's coming out and the player makes the movement of the leg towards the keeper, that's that's a dive. Mm. Is it? Dive? If if they can, if, if they lost the game, is that a dive? In VAR, if yeah, is it arguably? Where it's arguably. not. It's a lot of the game is not, and that's what I was saying. That's that's what happens. Um, briefly as well before we finish up, this is going to be out on podcast format probably tomorrow, won't it be? Maybe even Friday. It'll be out on podcast for them. Hopefully tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow. Um, we've got something coming up from Jake as well for you uh, tomorrow night. And we'll tune have, in. Yes, tune in as always. And we'll have something up on Friday. We're going to try and get more content out. Um, I did a little video on Monday night as well. You can see, you'll see that on our Twitter page and our Facebook and the Sports Bible website. Uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, it was a Wednesday night this week. Thank you all for joining us. And we'll see you again next week, Thursday night, 8 o'clock. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and go to our YouTube page and our website. Just look for the Sports Bowl.